of the imprints we leave. D. Grant Smith, the power of the imprints we leave. Have you ever felt this big? You felt like you're invisible? You felt like who you are and what you do doesn't matter? Was it because somebody else did something to you to make you feel that way? Bullies are really good about trying to put us in our place, trying to minimalize us and tear us down so that they can feel better about themselves. As a smaller person, we were talking a minute ago about picking on bigger people, I've been picked on for most of my life and it instilled a great deal of fear in me about who I am and whether or not what I do, what I contribute, has mattered and has value. I have a good friend, though, that told me this great thing. She left an imprint on me. And what she said was this, success is the greatest form of revenge. So, despite my desire at certain points in my life to go Bruce Lee on these people who have harmed me, instead, I want to be successful. And my definition of success is this, to change the world and make it better one individual at a time. I am committed to spending my life working to improve other people's lives one individual at a time, to build them up where others might have torn them down. If I were to have a thermal imaging uh, heater and screener, <coughs> put my hand here and take it away, there's going to be an imprint of my hand there for a limited period of time. Depending on how warm my hand is, that imprint's going to stay there for a period of time. My job as somebody who wants to be successful, and our jobs collectively as Toastmasters, is every single opportunity that we have to leave imprints on people's minds and their hearts, to change people one individual at a time, one moment at a time, but we're only given a very small amount of time to do that because we're constantly surrounded by distraction, constantly surrounded by images and media and all kinds of things that take our attention away. So we have to be very particular and very focused on the limited amount of time that we have to make dynamic impressions on minds and hearts. And I want to share with you just a few people who have left dynamic impressions on me and inspired me to do the same thing for others. The first one is Steve Harvey. Now you can say what you want to about Steve Harvey and teleprompters, but Steve Harvey is really good at leaving dynamic, powerful, permanent impressions on people. This is the impression that he left on me. He said this one phrase, the dream is free, the hustle is sold separately. Think about that. It's really easy and natural for us to dream about doing big things and achieving big success and having a bunch of things happen to us and accolades and praise and wonderful things, but getting to that place, working hard, persevering, keep fighting the good fight, overcoming obstacles like dealing with people who have marginalized you or trying to make you feel small. This part, this is difficult. This has a price tag. This does not come easy. Anybody can be here. Not anybody can be here. That's an impression, an imprint that was left on me that will not change. It's still there. Another person that left a powerful imprint on me, her name is Amanda Palmer. Amanda Palmer was the first musician to crowdfund over a million dollars. And she did that by cultivating a dynamic community, an incredible impression, series of impressions that she leaves with individuals, one person at a time. She wrote this incredible book that changed my life in this way. I've struggled for most of my life in asking for help. Despite feeling minimalized and marginalized and this big sometimes, I was brought up in a culture that said, you pull yourself up by your bootstraps, and you don't ask for help, because only beggars and moochers are people that ask for help. Those are people that are weak, and you can't be weak, you have to be strong, and you have to do it on your own. So take that with me into adulthood, and then into small businesshood, and trying to face all of the challenges of being a small business owner, and just being an adult who does adulting, and who doesn't ask for help, and it's problematic. So, reading her book changed the way that I felt about asking. It changed the way that I look at the process of asking. And I didn't see asking as a sign of weakness. 
or as a sign of somebody who lacks something. Instead, I saw it as a way to build community. Because Amanda said this, if you give them your heart, and if you love them completely, and if you ask, they will give you everything. And she's referring to your community, to your fan base. If you love them completely, and if you ask, they will give you everything. So the things that I lack, the things that I feel like I can't do on my own, it comes down to me choosing to love completely, and then ask. And that left a powerful impression on my heart and on my mind. This changed the way that I operate and changed the way that I think. That impression is not going away. My challenge to you, fellow Toastmasters, is this. We have a limited amount of time every week when we meet together to interact with each other, to do our different presentations, to give our different speeches. We have a limited amount of time with the interactions that we have outside of here, online, on Facebook, which is really, really hard to leave a permanent impression because of all the stuff that's coming at us all the time. We have a limited amount of time in the interactions that we have at work with our colleagues, at church with our friends, in the community of the different things that we do. We have to decide, we have to face the challenge and accept the challenge and the opportunity to be remarkable, to tell remarkable stories and to choose to leave powerful imprints on people's minds and their hearts that don't go away in a short amount of time. I challenge you to do this. I challenge you to be successful with me. Will you accept it? Mr. Toastmaster.